the last few years, automotive safety has been a newsworthy item, as much as the moonshot, ecology, and the economy. And that's what this month's session is all about. Safety. Chrysler Corporation has always worked toward building safer, more reliable cars. However, the safest car in the world isn't going to completely compensate for certain bad driving habits. Today's cars are produced with the best, most up-to-date safety equipment to help prevent accidents or minimize injuries if that unfortunate thing happens. The safety devices that are now installed as standard equipment on all cars have been proven effective and are there for the benefit of the driver and his passengers. Therefore, the owner must be convinced that these devices must not be removed or made inoperative in any way. They must also be used properly and kept in good working condition to be effective. To accomplish this, owners will have to be sold and educated on the idea of regular inspection and periodic maintenance by dealership personnel from the salesman who sold the car to the technician who will service it. And if you work together as a team, it won't be a hard job. I've lined up a guy who is real sharp when it comes to dealer-conducted safety programs. His name is Marty, and I'm sure that he can give us the story on what you as dealership personnel can do to promote safety and car care among your customers. You have the floor, Marty. I would like to direct the first few remarks to personnel and attendants who are responsible for new car pre-delivery service inspection. Life can be a lot easier for the rest of the dealership as far as customer relations go if they fully appreciate the importance of new car prep. All Chrysler Corporation dealers are provided with a checklist to make new car prep and inspection a smooth operation. This makes it more likely that the car is delivered with everything working properly and as safe to drive as it was designed and built to be. Before you turn the car over for delivery, check to make sure that the certification tags are in place on the inside left front fender well under the hood. If they're not, notify your regional office immediately. Next, I want to say a few words to the salesmen who are in attendance tonight. The salesman who turns the keys over to a new owner is a most important link in instructing and promoting customer safety habits. But before you do that, make a quick operational double check of all lights, wipers and washers, lap and shoulder belts, door and hood latches, brakes and steering. If any one of these doesn't work right, stop right there. He isn't going anyplace with the car, so don't bother with the instructions at this time. When you're satisfied that everything is okay, demonstrate how to operate the ignition and steering lock. It may be new to a lot of owners. Explain the five key positions to him and tell him that the key cannot be removed unless it is in the lock position. On all but the full-sized cars equipped with a console-mounted gear shift selector, a separate locking lever on the column must be pressed down and held before the key can be turned to the lock position, regardless of what position the transmission is in. While you're at it, tell him about the key and headlight reminder buzzer. Good point, Tech. I think that most people are familiar with power brakes and steering. However, if the owner has gone to a larger or smaller model, or has never driven with disc brakes, tell him to take it easy for the first couple of miles to get the feeling of both before getting into heavy traffic. And while you're on the subject of brakes, point out the brake system warning light. Explain that this light not only tells him the parking brake is applied, but if it comes on when the service brakes are applied, it means that either the front or rear brakes are not working. By now, the customer is ready to drive out the door in his new car. Before he does, suggest that he get in the car and demonstrate to him the way to adjust, fasten, tighten, and unfasten the lap belts. Also show him the proper position for the belt, down as low as possible on the lap, never above the lap. Stress the use of the shoulder belt in addition to the lap belt to restrain the upper part of the body. It is adjusted and fastened the same way as the lap belt. While you're at it, give the customer this little warning. The shoulder belt is not to be used without a lap belt. Make sure the seat back latches on two door models are working by pulling the seat forward while the latch is engaged. Explain that these latches are a safety feature and should be serviced if they become inoperative. 
If the car is equipped with head restraints, show how they can be adjusted to the right height. Instruct the owner that they should be adjusted for each occupant. The restraint should be adjusted so that it is at head level to provide maximum protection from injury. While you're near the driver's seat, point out the tire pressure information decal located on the front door lock pillar. At the same time, tell him that there are additional safety performance and maintenance instructions in the glove compartment that he should read carefully. And that about wraps up new car delivery. Not quite, Marty. Also in the glove compartment is the operator's manual. This little gem contains everything that you have just discussed, plus a lot more. Every owner should be strongly urged to read it carefully right away. Really knowing his car will help him get the greatest possible enjoyment and safety from his new car. So much for new car inspection and delivery. Right now, let's silently review the items that we've covered. Okay, so much for new car pre-delivery inspection and owner instruction. The next time you'll see the owner is when he brings the car in for service. When he does, the first place he has to stop is at the write-up desk. Let's briefly discuss how safety can be promoted by the service write-up man. Before the owner even gets out of his car, ask him to operate all lights and wipers and washers so that you can check their operation. Explain to him that this is a quick courtesy check made in the interest of his driving safety. After the owner gets out of the car, get behind the wheel to read the mileage on the odometer. At the same time, press the brake pedal to test the height and feel. High mileage or excessive pedal travel is a sign that it's time to inspect the brake linings for wear and the automatic adjusters for proper operation. Suggested to the owner. Casually ask the owner a few well-chosen questions about the steering, brakes, and handling. The answers may indicate that additional service is required in the best interest of safety. Of course, if the owner states a condition that requires road testing, this is the best way to check the car for safe performance and handling. When you walk around to the front or back end of the car to take the license number, stoop down and take a quick look at the tire tread. Abnormal or excessive wear could indicate improper inflation, lack of rotation, incorrect front end alignment, or just plain worn out unsafe tires. Last but not least, take a quick overall look at the exterior of the car for obviously unsafe conditions and point them out to the owner. Look for things like cracked or damaged glass, loose or protruding exterior trim, and misaligned doors or hood that may mean they are not safely latched. If any of these conditions exist, Point them out to the owner at once and suggest that he have the condition corrected while the car is in the dealership. It will benefit both of you in regards to his safety and in regards to your service sales. Tech, before I get into what the technician's role is in promoting safety and service, do you want to review what we've just covered? Yes, Marty. We're almost to the end of this side of the record. So I'll ask someone right now to please turn the record at the end of this silent review. Few owners are capable or willing to periodically safety check their cars. Even if they took the time to look, a lot of them wouldn't see potential trouble that would be obvious to you. That's why you should perform this little courtesy for them whenever their car is in for service. There are a number of items that you can safety check both inside and outside the car. If the repair order calls for work under the hood, safety check items in the engine compartment. 
If you have to put the car in the air, do likewise to the drivetrain, exhaust system, and steering suspension and tires. Since most of you technicians do your own car moving, start with items inside the car. It only takes a few moments, and you may notice something that the owner should be notified of. You might start with a starter safety switch. Before checking the starter safety switch, be sure to have a clear distance ahead and behind the car. Set the parking brake and firmly apply the service brake. Keep your foot off the accelerator pedal to avoid setting the choke and be prepared to turn off the ignition if the engine should start. On automatic transmission cars, check the starter safety switch by shifting to each of the gears and attempting to start the engine. The starter should operate only with the selector in the park or neutral position. To check the starter interlock on 70 and 71 manual transmission models, depress the clutch approximately one-third of its travel. Place the selector in neutral and turn the key to start. Slowly depress the clutch. The starter should not operate until the clutch pedal is almost to the floor. Before you put the car in gear, test the brake pedal travel and feel with the motor running. Apply the brakes while moving the car and check for any noticeable pulling or grabbing. While you're moving the car, test the steering for excessive play or looseness. Keep an ear open for sounds that indicate a pump needs fluid. Look for lack of assist that tells you a drive belt is slipping. Once you get the car into the service bay, apply the parking brake to make sure it keeps the car from moving. Also make sure the brake warning light comes on when the parking brake is applied and the ignition is on. On automatic transmission cars, shift into park to make sure the parking pole engages. And as long as you're behind the wheel, check the ignition and steering lock by attempting to turn the key to lock without first placing the gear selector in park on automatics, reverse on manual shifts, or depressing the lock inhibitor lever on cars other than full size with console mounted shift levers. While you're still in the driver's seat, check the lap and shoulder belts. Inspect the belts and the buckles to make sure that they're in good operating condition. As a final check, give the floor mat or carpeting a quick once-over to make sure that it does not interfere with the accelerator or the dimmer switch. Right now, I'd like to review the items that should be checked inside the car. Take these precautions for the first two. The starter safety switch on automatic transmissions. And the starter interlock on manual transmissions. Then check the brakes. The power steering. The parking brake and warning light. The parking pawl on automatics. The ignition and steering lock. And lap and shoulder belts. Since a high percentage of routine maintenance work is done under the hood, that is the area I'll cover next. When you lift the hood to get to work, check both the hood latch and safety catch to make sure both are working properly. While you're working under the hood, keep your eyes open for leaks of any kind. Check the hose connections closely for any kind of seepage. As long as you're checking hoses for leaks, make sure all hoses and lines are properly routed and securely retained. Loose hoses or lines can be burned by lying on the exhaust manifold or ruined by rubbing against any object. I think that it is particularly important to closely inspect electrical wires and connections. Make sure that connections are tight and wires are not frayed or broken and are properly routed to avoid damage. The prospect of having the wipers or lights fail when they're needed is not a pleasant thought. Finally, check the condition and adjustment of all drive belts. The power steering drive belt is the most important in regards to safety. But as long as you check one, why not check them all? Before we go on to under-the-car safety checks, we'll have another little review. 
Want to read them for the boys, Marty? Check both hood latches. Check hose connections closely. Make sure hoses are properly routed and securely retained. Closely inspect electrical connections. Check condition and adjustment of all drive belts. That's it for under the hood safety checks. Now let's discuss what to look for in the interest of safety if the repair order calls for putting the car on the hoist. The underside of the car is the part that the customer seldom sees. The most important and the easiest item to check with the car on the hoist is the tires. Rotate each one and check for unusual wear patterns, sidewall damage, tread separations, or foreign material embedded in the tread. While you're at it, check the depth of the tire tread. If the tread depth is less than 1 16th deep, it should be brought to the owner's attention. Explain that shallow tread increases the chance of having a blowout or skidding on snow or wet pavement. You might even sell a set of tires. As long as you're right there, grasp each front wheel, top and bottom, and rock it in and out. This is a quick check to see if there's any front wheel bearing looseness. In the same area, check the calipers, or backing plates, and surrounding areas for evidence of fluid leaks. Also check the brake lines and flexible hoses to make sure they are properly routed, and check the connections closely for signs of seepage. Steering ranks right along with the brakes when it comes to the importance of being in top-notch condition. Check the entire steering linkage, tie rods, idler arm, and pitman arm for looseness by grabbing them and trying to shake them. A loose lower control arm can be another troublemaker when it comes to braking and handling. Inspect the rubber bushing at the front end of the strut and the attachment at both ends. Tie rod end should be your next stop on the inspection tour. Pay particular attention to the condition of the seals. A torn or damaged seal can let lubricant leak out and let dirt and water in. We'll go into a little more detail on the steering and the ball joints in the reference book. Check the shocks for excessive leakage and check the mountings and bushings. You can move toward the rear of the car now. Anything they can look for on the way back, Marty? Definitely. First, make sure that the parking brake cables are free. Then check out the exhaust pipe, muffler, tailpipe, and all the clamps. If you spot any defects, tell the owner about it. That may be one exhaust system job that won't go to the muffler shop down the street. Exhaust leaks are bad enough, but if they're allowed to get into the car, it can become a serious safety hazard for the passengers. So while you're checking under the car, check to make sure that the underbody has no holes or open seams. If you remove the rear brake drum for any reason, check the condition of the lining and check around the wheel cylinder boots for signs of fluid leaks or rust. To wind up the safety inspection, inspect the spring leaves, clips, and shackles and take a good look to be sure that the spring hasn't shifted, which means loose U-bolts. Rear springs have a definite effect on handling. That winds it up under the car. Things to look for on the outside of the car oh, are... Hold it, Marty. I think that all we have time left for is a quick review. As for the outside of the car, we'll cover that in the reference book. Right now, let's review under-the-car safety checks. I'm going to let you fellas read them yourselves. <laughs> 